one that has the lawnmowers? What kind? The greenworks. Greenworks. Okay. Well, well they're, they're, they're the, the electric lawnmowers. Okay. They're for, but I heard today it's this other business that's where they're interested in buying Millstone and using keeping part of the golf course as they, a dance. They made an offer for Millstone that was rejected. Oh. So did we. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Same reason. Okay. Let me hit this for a minute because this is going to come back and it will go will be pushed back on you. Parallel to making improvements on the road on Cumberland, planning is working on stiffer <laughs> regulations <laughs> on junk cars sitting around on lots. You can look at historic pictures from Google Maps. And there are vehicles on Cumberland parked on lots that have been there for nearly a decade. We've got to do something to help turn that over and stop it being a junkyard. There will be an ordinance coming for your consideration, but invariably you start talking about that. It's like talking about dogs and cats and doing the other things. You will hear some, uh, some real pushback about we're picking on them. But if you want this corridor to look like what you envision for the long term, we've got to address auto storage, junk cars that are not moving. It's not that they're being repaired or, or addressed, they're, they're being used as a junkyard. So that's a, we know that it's gonna be painful. It would be a whole lot of uh, uh, folks complaining, but both sides, and y'all would be caught in the middle. But if you want to make the improvements on the corridor, I think it's one of the things you got to tie. I mean, I, I agree with you 100% on it, but what I would do, I would get the worst first. I think what we're doing is bringing an ordinance that will probably come through planning commission as, as a recommendation to the, uh, to the council as a whole, but you've got, uh, that, like I said, it, there'll be pain involved, so. Make sure when you do that, you don't get Columbo Star. <laughs> what? Columbo, don't get Columbo star. Oh, along, along, that. along that same line, Tommy has mentioned it that we, you know, you do a little bit and give you six more months. Uh, same thing that happened. What happened with the Hurley property? You know, if he did a little work, then his time is extended. I think we really need to look at that a little. That's bit. a state law. Well, no. Okay, I think we need to divide. Okay, that part. But the other part is. Maybe you, you can work and extend, but you also need to keep it clean. You need to keep the bur uh, the um, you know the grass. And <coughs> I think there was a significant burn fingers around staff when we brought it before council trying to enforce it, and it blew up in our face. On the Hurley property. On the Hurley property. Well, I think in preparation, should it ever, I don't know, I can't think of where it would happen again, but in case something like that. It was the Hurley property. Eagle Heights down on North Block, Block Road. Oh, yes, that's why we need to separate that. Okay. Um, council meeting software. The devices you use to vote at the council meetings are about to become not supported by software. Next year, we're going to be having to look at something else. We probably will end up with software that looks slightly different on the screen and you'll be having a device sort of like your phone to vote. It's gonna be a, a bit of a learning curve, but uh, our, we'll help you as we go through making the selection and, and getting up to speed, but the system we're using is no longer gonna be supported. We're gonna to have to walk away from it. While you're looking at that, I would like for you to look at uh, computer screens at each person's seat because from where you and I sit over there, I can't see we cannot see the screen. And I, when they're talking about some things that are up on the screen, I have no idea what they're talking about. Well, you're the bottom end of it. Yeah. It well, that's, and so I have looked at trying to reconfigure that room. That room has real problems on a lot of fronts. But I did notice the other night that the county does have they have actual screens at each desk. I don't know if that's a thing or not. But but even if we had another, I had another one to look at. Another one to look at for the council. But Bob highlighted, you can't walk good. You can't get up to your seat on at council seat. 
Yeah. If we had someone who had a, an actual disability. disability, we could not easily accommodate them in our current configuration. And there is no way to put a ramp in. No. Uh, one no, end no. of the desk, there's a fire exit on the other end of the door, you go into the room. But every time you deal with the ceiling in that room, it was it's not easy to work on. It's gonna mean when we do something significant to that room, it's gonna be gutted and come back and do something fresh. And that room was built, they knew nothing about laptops or anything. Laptops, A V, none of that stuff was important. Put a screen on the back wall. That you, your eyes are better than mine then. But yeah, that's well I can't read the one up on the up on, above uh, Rachel. Okay. So I'll put that on a, on a, on a longer term list, but look, we're gonna have to do some changes. We know we got AV problems. I wish there's a better answer. We'll see if we can do something else. Um, we've come a long way from the police having to bring us all this stuff about homelessness. Yeah, so it, it is it's definitely <laughs> getting improved. Um, you're dealing with credit on a lot of this stuff, so we'll, we'll go. All right, there has been talk in the past about the idea of an additional camera at Merchant Screen and, and West AJ. That is the location of uh, TDOT is going to put in a second left turn lane if you're westbound on AJ to Merchant Screen. I don't know, I think that's two years out, so I don't know where we stand on that, but that is. Uh, is a, an ongoing conversation. School resource officers. You can't use retired people. They, for a lot of reasons, age, um, connectability, physical ability. It just they just of retired people. Just it's just not what you need with the people that are you know on their wavelength. All right, I know that the superintendent is convening a, a discussion about school resource officers coming from the school board. I do not know the details of what the school board wants and is asking for. Does anyone else? I do not. I do not. I know that Dr. Perry <coughs> is struggling with how do we put additional school, how do, first off, we're under staff as SROs today. And he's, he's being asked to look at how we do more work um, I don't know there's an easy answer. I don't know how that conversation is gonna go, but invariably it's gonna come back to you all directly or, or indirectly. So be aware that the discussion about school resource officers is about to become a, uh, a more of a front burner conversation topic. Um, all right, Bob. I, I was going to let you talk about about wit, but I don't know if we want to have that kind of language. You know, that's uh, well. I, I, I'll just tell you my experience with when I was with the utility and Dick Jesse and I worked very hard on the city at that time was on the annex down on the west end of this before you get to here, um, and we worked a whole lot and we found out that with the uh, and I did a lot of letters that me and them had that what the, the reason we can't acquire them is because they have borrowed money from the federal government. And if they hadn't borrowed, borrowed money from the federal government, the state government would let, let us buy their uh, water line and assume the operation. But see, they've all went out and borrowed money. So that's what got the city keeping from being able when they annex to take over those operations of the water, water system. Do they still owe that money? Pardon? They still owe that money, some of it. Oh yeah, they, they'll, they'll, they'll keep on it. They'll keep oh, it. But we're not allowed to take over the debt. No, we're not. No, no. no. What what has happened? And I researched it a whole lot in Middle Tennessee. Uh, the only people that can get them turned over some is the customer. And what they have to do, they have to get a petition and ask for that to happen. Then they have to hire a lawyer. And the lawyer fees are pretty high. Well, now some of the Middle Tennessee communities have done that and succeeded. Now, if these people like WIT, WIT is the second highest utility rate in the state of Tennessee for water. Uh, probably not over here, whatever not, this is the first. 
But they, they have, that's what they'd have to do, I think. The city can't do a thing in the world. There's nothing we can do. It has to be the property owners to do it. But the problem that Tony's talking about is uh, they're giving the city a hard time on the industrial park out there. You can't expand it until you get into that service there. I don't know what it stands for that. But if you want to expand it anymore, they're, they're going to take you to court on that. And then, and then there's a service area out there that's an annex that uh, it's still residential still. And I don't know the answer to it. They not really give the answer to it. You ask the customer to do something about it. Do you understand any other way? No, I think that that's a fair description of, of where we stand. There are many roadblocks. But it's going to hurt industrial development. And it's going to be an impact. One of the impediments of growing ETPC to the west and to Jeff County, one of the major ones is with water. Yeah, if you want to blame somebody, and I've got the, I was there at the meeting with utilities. The three commissioners came into the utility and asked for the utility to take them, asked for the MUS to take them over, to take them over. And the manager never did a damn thing about it. Perfect yeah. timing to do it. That was opportunity lost. That was stupidity. All right. Lawsuits. The way that lawsuits are being handled and managed, I'm not comfortable that you all are adequately informed and up to date. I don't know if you are comfortable or not, but that is a conversation you might want to have with the city attorney. Because I don't know what to what extent you're getting briefings from, from legal, but there are a number of outstanding lawsuits. Would that be a, a special session that we could have on that? Um, you can have confer with your, uh, your your attorney over ongoing litigation. That's correct. Well, I yeah. think I mentioned that sometime or another that we yes, I agree. We need that. The lawsuits that against the city, yes, or against the council members. Well, you usually get named in in the uh, in the when, when things are filed, but uh, you, as a group, not individually. Right, as a group, as, or, or even if you're named individually, you're covered by. Well, are they any, do you know of any lawsuits against individuals? I don't remember any since I've been home. <sighs> it's all the way for us. I remember that one was against individuals. Uh, but, oh, yeah, we got them. Yeah. Uh, was that a theft one? Was that a theft one? No. No? Hmm. Oh, okay. Usual stuff. All right. <laughs> Because so, we have some that are not just going to handle by the city attorney. We have some that's others. correct. They're coordinated <laughs> through the city attorney. The majority of the big suits get referred back to PEP and back. Uh, uh, Watson Roach is the ones that, that represent you. But uh, uh, you've got lawsuits that I don't know how much you're informed about in terms of what's there. Uh, but that is something you may want to have a conversation with Lauren about. You know, my experience when I was in utility, if the city was water system was sued, I was the one that had to go with Dick to represent them. But I come to find out, they settled most of them out of court. Even if you were in the, even if you were in the right, you still had to pay. Because that explains why those kind of filed the suits. That's the cheapest, and the reason the lawyers did it's cheaper to settle it than it is to try it. All right, we're winding down. And we got a hot button that they need to cover. Well, it's not 1130 yet. That's right. Okay. I've got one more thing we need to do. All right. Um, in looking at the budget, and we don't have to discuss it today, I would like for us to consider, look look at Cali Ward, and then also um, have some individual, like Imagination Library building there. So then that's, that's in our nonprofits that I'd like to submit that we consider, you know, continuing our support from the Imagination Library. Um, on the landing, I still have heartburn over the tag. I think I'm the only one with the tag of uh, TVA in bright red under the name. And I also think on those sponsorships, we need to, I mean, we haven't been given anything by Greg Weiskopfer as to with this much money in sponsorship, this is what you get. And every organization that you, their levels of membership and what comes with that membership. And I think that needs to be determined on the front end. Instead of saying, oh, yes, you can put it on your letterhead, you can print cups with it, but the, the landing, etc. But I really do not support 
having the TVA right under the landing, and I was told that red is their color there. The other thing about the landing, I think when I, I brought it up and had a question about the splash pad and the charging a $5 to use a splash pad, I don't know where we are on that. And then where are we on the contract with Marsha handling the space that they are going to make okay. arrangements for that? All right. The, I have given assurances to Mr. O'Dell and Mr. Lentz about the, the splash pad if that is a uh, uh, impediment for their grant process, but we will not let that impede their grant. But as far as I've gotten, we, we're looking to see where where that goes, but that's not a big revenue item. That's, that's something that, that is definitely workable and does not have to be decided right now. The conversation with Covenant, uh, Gary and I had a, a follow up with them. They, they countered, they are, uh, we're probably 90 to 95% complete in terms of where they are. They wanted very long term extensions on, on the contract with, uh, with ceilings on the escalations over time. I've worked, I got some, uh, some notes back uh, actually yesterday morning as I was driving down here that I've got to get back and, and respond to Gordon, but I can say with a high degree of confidence, we're both going to end up in a situation that we'll be pleased with and, and moving forward. I'm almost certain that Covenant and the city will be able to, to craft a deal to place them and their uh, uh, cardiac rehab center there at the entrance to, to the landing. It's not done yet, and certainly we've got to get the language in front of you and, and the hospital uh, board, but uh, but I think uh, that that's a fair, uh, I think we're very, very close. Gary, you were in the meeting. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with what you said. So so those those two, two are moving. We'll, uh, I really, the last little bit I've been pressing to get this weekend ready to go, so I'll pick up some of those other pieces when we go back. Um, I have one other thing. Yes. Wait, sponsorship levels of what you get with your money that you put in. I, I, I have not seen that defined anywhere. No, and that will be part of the agreement that will come to you. No, no, I mean with everybody, not just Mark on handling. I'm talking about anybody. I mean, you, the ones that we've got on the table are TVA, Credit Union, and, uh, and Covenant. Those That's are all. the ones that are being done. Okay, but then if we bring other people in, you know, like I told you, you have a platinum, a gold, a bronze, whatever, if you want to call them, but they're it's, levels. I think you don't want to <laughs> tie the hands of our operator to that level. You need to be able to, to tailor the sponsorship to the user and it won't be the same for everybody's needs. Some may want to get uh, employee discounts for, for membership if they do certain sponsorships. Others may want visibility we need to give them some flexibility. I think we can report to you, but to put it on a menu and, and put it in the newspaper is probably not the best way to go. I can understand balancing the employee and the this and that and the other, but I think that, uh, I really think we need to talk about that. We need to be uh, aware because yes, you do need to tailor it, but um, I give you $75,000 sponsorship and Gary gives you a $75,000 sponsorship but he wants different things than I do and you allow those. But then I didn't think about that. So I come back to you and I said, well, Gary got this. I really, and maybe I'm overthinking this, but I know that there are no secrets, just like we know in employee pay, there are no secrets about what, uh, what you're getting for your money and what you're getting and maybe it's what your company needs. But I throw that out there if you don't have any other concerns and we get hit with it. Uh, I don't think we'll get hit with it. I think if we let the people that we've got to manage that will will do the sponsorship deals. The question is, if, if I'm going to spend seventy five thousand, I go to Craig Wise Carver, and you spend seventy five, and you want to be a sponsor, he's going to present us both the same thing. That's what I need to know. Okay, well, council members don't need to write that stuff up. I'm not saying we need to write it up. I'm saying we need to be sure that it's equal. Okay, well, why would we think it's not? I haven't been told it is. Then why do we bring it up? Because we, it, there are a lot of unknowns. But yet, who said? Bob says we get the credit for it. But then we vote on it. We approve it. Well, that's just in the category of thickening your skin up a little bit. Not always, but anyway, I put it out there. All right. Okay. Well, we've got.
I want to know who makes out the agenda for Jesus. Me? Me and Benny. Okay. And I'm not talking about people who want to come and speak. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, items of, of voting on and stuff like that. I'm talking about the overall agenda. This is what's going to happen tonight. This is, this is our agenda every time. So that's you and Cindy. Oh, you mean the Council the framework? A framework. It's in the ordinance. It's in the <laughs> ordinance. Same framework. We just plug in what the issues yeah. are. You want to know who the, plugs in what under okay, each topic? Okay, my point. Now here's what my point is. Every citizen of Morristown has a representative voted for them for their district or their area, and they also have a network, two at large members that represent each citizen. Why wouldn't the people go to their, their representatives or the at-large members instead of having, at the end of the agenda, people who just want to get up and talk about anything? So I'm suggesting that we do away with that. Now, if we have, I do agree that when you have the first agenda and the mayor says those people who have things to say about what's on the agenda tonight. I, I, I agree with that, that we need to be talking about that. But for people just to get up and want to talk to the council, they have council, they have representatives. They, they, can, they can call their representatives, they can call the alarm, they can call me, they can call Ken as at large, or they can call their district, or they can call anybody and discuss any issue they want to discuss. In, why, lieu, in lieu of what they're doing. And why do we have that time period out there for people just to get up and talk about anything we want to talk about? Code of Ordinances, Section 1-206 lays out that for the agenda. But that's not all we have. Well, we voted on that several years ago. Yeah, yeah that was Number 11, of course, you talked about communication. That you no, I it. think if there's communication to petition, that's okay, but... Does that mean that communications and positions means that a person has the right to get up and call a council member uh, racist? That's not communications or petitions. But it's kind of like open mic night. You know? It's exactly right. <laughs> and it doesn't say there it's open mic night. We've got, by ordinance, about, about the time we brought in the voting system when we, we Put the, modify this ordinance and, and structured the, uh, the the who comment periods as they are um, are laid out here. That is was council initiated the time uh, 2012. So that that's when it was adopted. Uh, you are not mandated to have any public comment other than legally required public hearings. Um, in addition to this, we also developed the uh, guidelines that are handed out at the, the table of people enter the meeting about proper decorum and those sorts of things. Uh, we can bring those back to you, but if you want to address that, it'll be a, a modification of the ordinance. Okay, but it's not charter, it's ordinance. It's ordinance. Yeah, yeah. Tommy, I, I understand where you're coming from I have I have been on the receiving end of that over the years <coughs> and um, I agree that it uh, is not always civil but I, I <coughs> think it's it's a right for the citizen well what what, what you're the right of it, explain to me what you're saying it's an opportunity citizens should have a, an opportunity to express their opinions but I do believe it should be in a civil way but I, I what's the difference in expressing their opinion then or picking up the telephone and calling any one of us and the, the, the big difference in his, in his favor there what he's saying that when they get up and make their complaint nobody answers them and they don't they, they don't solve it nothing, nothing <coughs> happens but what he's saying they could talk to the council person or whatever and have a conversation back and forth and get it solved outside the agenda. We've had people to get up in the meetings and say, I have three minutes and you're gonna to listen to me for three minutes. 
But you're basically I'm saying, I'm going to banter here for three minutes. I'm not going to tell you anything you need to know except you're all racist and you're all sexist and you're all whatever and whatever. That is not having communication <coughs> and petitions for the city. Well, Tom, it's because when they say what you just said there, it dies right there. They don't get any answer. But if, if they call a council person like you're talking about, then they try to settle it. Is that, am I right? <coughs> is that what you're talking about? I, I think like some even want to put it in on television so they can perform. Some cities have that. Um, and they they that. have the opportunity for citizens to come in before the meeting, and there is an opportunity for them to express, you know, talk about, ask questions on any topic. You have a limited <coughs> time frame. But is back to the Nashville, I went to one of their mm -hmm. council meetings. Mm -hmm. How they handle it? They have a separate meeting for complaints. A separate meeting just for complaints where they make them and they respond to them. Of course, I'm sure that's a, a bunch of com bunch of people, you know. But that's the most effective way I've ever seen. Now, that way, you know, all of the pretenders there's something like 22 <laughs> Metro Council members, and well, maybe seven or eight of them are there. Yeah, right? they just yeah, they, not all of them are there. They don't have to all be there to answer. They answer whatever's needed. I'm sure. It's a, but that's a simple <clears> way. I understand what what Tom is talking about. All right. Is this a partial answer to what you're talking about? Giving a, a positive way to provide our council interaction table, with people. Our neighborhood roundtables kind of got derailed because of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, they didn't have a lot well, of it, no, they it, it, it never either. got any traction. I mean, it, it, one out there at Lakemore did. That's the only one. But the other ones, you got the same people that come to them every time. Well, you got the same people getting up and saying something. And the they're council. saying the same, same thing. thing. And they don't have any more than three. Well, and then I always thought that if we revived those, the, the reason we had it crowded for Lakemore was because there was a Lakemore issue. Because of Dennis Pete and Dennis Alvarez. Too. Well, you there, there was an issue about, I wondered if we ought to make these roundtables uh, topic specific they might and have be. somebody. Uh, I've always told the city folks, don't you guys show up because it would be too easy for us to slough it off on you. Well, let's say we had a, <coughs> A, uh, a council round table at uh, Panther Springs about the about the fee structure that generates conversation or or about what's going to be at the, at the community center or another part of the city we had a topic about paving streets or the South Cumberland corridor and make it topic specific that might generate more interest. It could be, but I want to, I want to make sure I understand one thing. Uh, Bob's memory is not what he used to be. I understand that, and I can appreciate where he's coming from. You're, you're but correct. We had, you're we had, correct, for a we, we had a We had a, a meeting at Metaview School that was attended by 40 people. Yes. And we had a meeting at uh, uh, Trinity Church that was, was attended by 25 or 30 people. Uh, we had that big one at... Uh, Buffalo Trail. Um, we had quite a few of those. Now, some of them were not very many people showed up, but there were a lot of them that people showed up because they had issues they wanted to discuss. I don't mind reviving them and doing it again if, if we want to do it. I think that's better than doing that. But we might bring a guest speaker for the topic to come. <coughs> the, the reason one uh, succeeded out of late was because Lamar took the yeah, answer and asked right, all of them. Right. That's the reason it succeeded. Yeah. I remember that. But there were some of them, two or three people there. And there were one of them, whatever. Or do we need to go get the nickel of light before you two start on one another? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bob's one of my favorite people. Uh, we're in love. Don't you know? And you mentioned, that's the other thing about the landing, the fees. I think we need to talk about that more. We well, might, yeah. but let's don't do it a year in advance where, where the the low information crowd goes berserk over something that we have, we haven't even approved yet. So that's uh, there's a you're talking about the fee structure. I have a lady call think, me. You know that that's a I, I think we need to really work on that. Yeah. But, but, but I, so right, what they haven't talked about is they're going to be getting twenty percent off. Okay. For I'm going I'm to get off Bob and I'm going to get on somebody else. What fee structure? You would never it. put that fee structure on Facebook. It wouldn't have been. Well, they, they did it. I mean, they had it. If I hadn't, you know who would have. I had a lady call me from White Pine Thursday, and 
and said, when is Morristown Landing going to open up? She said, I can't wait. She said, I'm tired of the health club I'm going to in Morristown. Don't take more than one people. She but there. she's from White Pine. I mean. What do you I think know. about having all the roundtables and naming it, maybe uh, community conversations and having them at the city hall? I wouldn't have the city hall. I like having the neighborhoods. Okay. That's, uh, that's the neighborhood. And that's right. the thing. We, we, it's, that's, and this is the fundamental difference in the city and the county governments is that each of us are voted on by the entire city. Right. Each county commissioner, they just have to, uh, they just have to get elected by one fourteenth of the county. Right. And if you get fifty percent of the vote, they just have to get elected by one twenty eighth. That's all they got to worry about. That's why they have. That's why they got gridlock the last ten years, and that's the fundamental difference. Is we're answerable to everybody, not just it's Ward a One, it's Ward a Two. Way to do it, right? Sure it is. Sure it is. Okay. Before we get completely packed up, I need to do grading the papers. Give us a report card. This is the evaluation. Now give us feedback. Get you why. Get a war. I thank you. Okay. Thank you. Tony, I'm going to put on that for you to have I'm more. You know this business. Yeah, please. <laughs> Don't leave out the white out. I count it too. Don't get your wire. Get, I, this this yeah. met you? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hey, right. yeah. that's what you had to do. That's exactly right. You're doing <laughs> good. That's your assignment. Hey. I love it. Now,